While Siri hasn't yet made its way to the Mac, it's still possible to replicate some of the functionality provided by Apple's digital personal assistant with tools available in OS X. I'm Alex Arena with Tuts Plus, and today I'm going to show you how to do just that by creating automator actions that you can trigger with your voice. While the automator application itself has been around since OS 10.4 Tiger, with the new release of OS 10.10 Yosemite, Apple introduced a new kind of action available within automator, the dictation command. Before we make our first dictation command though, I'll need to configure my Mac to allow these advanced commands to be used. To do that, I'll open up System Preferences, and then enter the pane titled Dictation and Speech. This is where we'll take care of all the basics, including simply enabling the dictation features already baked into OS X. I'll click here to turn dictation on, and then I'll check this box to use Enhanced Dictation. This will allow us to take advantage of the advanced dictation commands available in Automator. At this point, if this is the first time you're enabling enhanced dictation, your Mac is going to start downloading a pretty hefty 800 megabyte file. In addition to enabling enhanced dictation commands, this is also going to allow your Mac to use dictation without connecting to Apple servers. Since I've previously enabled enhanced dictation though, I'm saved from having to sit through that download again. Next, we'll need to confirm that the proper microphone is selected. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to stick with the internal microphone, but you're going to get the best results with an external microphone, such as one built into a set of headphones, like Apple's own earpods. The last setting we're going to want to confirm is the dictation shortcut. By default, this is mapped to pressing the function key twice. That should work just fine for most people, but if you're using an external keyboard that doesn't include a function key, you can map it to these presets, or something entirely custom. Okay, so, with those prerequisites taken care of, we can finally move on to the meat of the tutorial, creating our first dictation command. As I've mentioned a couple of times before, this is going to be done through the Automator application. So, without further ado, I'm going to open up Automator, and we can get started. I'm going to choose New Document, and then, of course, Dictation Command. So unlike some other kinds of automator actions, dictation commands don't accept any input. This is a blessing and a curse. On one hand, this means that we can trigger them at any time from anywhere. On the other, we're necessarily limited in the scope of what our actions can do. We're not going to be able to modify a file that we've selected in the finder, for example. That limitation aside, dictation commands are more or less identical to any other automator action. And so building them, works exactly as you'd expect. On the left-hand side, we're presented with a library of actions that we can drag over to the right, like so, to build our workflow. So let's do that. I'm going to build a simple dictation command that plays everyone's favorite album, U2's Songs of Innocence. The first thing we'll need to do is to define the phrase that will activate our dictation command. I'll make mine play my favorite album. Below that, there's an option to enable our command. We're going to check that if we actually want to use our command, which, yeah, we do. Now, I'm going to drag some actions into my workflow. As I said before, any Automator actions installed on your Mac should work just fine. Since we're trying to replicate some of Siri's functionality, though, our action wouldn't be complete without our Mac talking back to us. To do that, I'm going to drag in Get Specified Text as well as the speak text action. Here's where we're going to define the response that the Mac gives our voice command. Once that's taken care of, we can now choose the voice our Mac uses to speak its response. Many of these options have been baked into OS X practically since the beginning, so they're almost comically bad. Luckily though, included in our earlier download of those enhanced dictation features was the voice behind Siri. Curiously though, Apple has renamed the Siri voice for OS X, instead calling it Samantha. I'll choose Samantha from this list, and we can move on. Now I'm going to define what our action actually does. In my case, it's going to play an album from iTunes, so I'm going to use the Get Specified iTunes Items and Start iTunes Playing Actions. I'll press Add to choose the songs I'd like to play, and then add again to confirm my choices. Finally, before we finish up, 
I'm going to make this ever so slightly more ridiculous by adding the Start iTunes Visuals action to my workflow. Now that our dictation command is complete, we can save it and press Run to test it out. As you can see, our faux Siri has confirmed my command and started playing U2. Now since that was running from within Automator, I didn't actually need to speak my command. To make it accessible from anywhere, there's still one last thing that we need to take care of. I'll head back to System Preferences, but this time, I'll go into the Accessibility menu. If you scroll all the way down here to the bottom, you'll see that there's actually more options related to Dictation. I'll select that, and then Dictation Commands. Here, we're shown a list of all the advanced commands that we enabled earlier, along with the command we just created in Automator. Make sure the commands you created in Automator, as well as the Enable Advanced Commands boxes, are both checked, that is, if they're not already. Finally, I'd encourage you to scroll through this whole list to see some of the cool advanced commands already built into your Mac. Two of these that I find myself using all the time are Stop Listening and Search Spotlight 4. Both are pretty self-explanatory, but they're tucked away so they often fly under the radar. So, with those final settings confirmed, I'll press Done, and we can exit out of System Preferences. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. I'll hit the key command that I defined in the beginning of this tutorial to call it the Dictation Window, and I'll speak my command. Play my favorite album. Okay, Alex. Just like Playing that, songs and whether you innocence. like it or not, we're now rocking out to you too. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus. Enjoy.